Thanks for watching our first playoff edition of our high school football chat. I'm Fox 23 Sports Director Nathan Thompson, along with the Tulsa World's Barry Lewis. And kind of an er interesting first round of playoffs this year, Barry. Some classes, you look at them and, oh, there's a lot of blowouts there. But some other classes, there's a lot of good matchups. Yes, there are. And uh, look at that. In 6A2, you've got Stillwater-Bixby. That's going to be a really good matchup. Even Booker T. Washington in Putnam City, uh, that could be interesting, although I think B Booker T. is going to win. But uh, that's not an easy assignment for a district champion in the first round game. Then you look at 5A, we got Tahlequah, Coweta, Noble, Bishop Kelly. Those look like barn burners. Even on the west side, a game that on paper might look like a blowout, Carl Albert versus Lawton Mack. Lot and Mack is one of the most dangerous five and five teams that you'll want to face. And so they could give Carl Albert uh, an interesting test, even though I think Carl Albert is my pick to win it all <laughs> in 5A. Look, they look like a juggernaut in that class. Well, let's kind of go through the top five Metro games that you have in your column in the Tulsa World Tuesday edition of the paper and on, also on OKPrepsExtra.com. Your number one game, Fox 23's Game of the Week, Norman North at Broken Air. That's Class 6A1. Probably really the only Class 6A1 that we expect to be a close game, but this one should really be a close game. Yes, it should be. Uh, Broken Arrow goes into the playoffs with a lot of momentum. Uh, Norman North is coming off two consecutive shutouts. I think Broken Arrow has more momentum, though, and the home field advantage will carry the Tigers through against Norman North in a matchup of the last two teams, last two state runners-up in 6A1. In Class 6A2 is your number two game. You touched base on it here a little bit. Stillwater at Bixby, the Spartans going for their fourth straight state title. Yes, uh, Bixby always seems ready at this time of the year, and so they've yeah, I'm not going to pick against Bixby. A lot of people are picking Stillwater, but I think Bixby's experience of winning at this time of the year as opposed to Stillwater, which really hasn't enjoyed that success in a decade or so. So, uh, and Tucker Polly is running the ball really well, <laughs> probably most importantly for Bixby. Uh, he had a great game last week. So I'm going with Bixby. And number three, we go down to Class 4A, Kasha Hall at Broken Bow Commandos, who lost to Ulaga, but they have come on strong in the second half of the season. Yes, that's a quality loss, and they've also got their veteran quarterback, Dalton Abney, back, although Jackson Henderson did a great job <laughs> filling in for him. It's a tough road trip to Broken Bow, but Kasha Hall is 4-0 on the road the last two years and in the playoffs, so I think that somehow they're going to find a way to win at Broken Bow. That would be a great win for the Commandos if they can pull it off. Your number four game is back up in 6A1. It's a Westmore and a Wasso. You say on paper this looks like a close one, but the Rams have blown out any West Side team they played this year. Yes, and I think this could be similar to when, <laughs> remember when everyone was hyped about Westmore and then Broken Arrow went over there and won 41-7? to That could be that type of game at Owasso on Friday night. Such a great story for the Rams, who were 3-9 and nine last season and this year in their first year under Bill Blankenship. One of the best, uh, the, maybe the co-favorites with Union to win the state title after that amazing double overtime game they had in the regular season. Your number five game, Sand Springs at Midwest City, which is a, a tough draw for the Sand Knights. Yes, it is, even though Sand Springs, two of the previous three years, have gone over to Midwest City in the first round and knocked off the Bombers, upsets both times. So if any 5-5 five and five team could do it in this situation, <laughs> I think Sand Springs could. But I think Midwest City's just got too much. Uh, it seems like Sand Springs on offense, they've just got Peyton Scott, although that is a lot since he is the state's <laughs> leading rusher. But uh, I think Midwest City's just got too much. And they've sort of had a breakthrough this year. The Bombers have had, they, in the past few years, even though they've had pretty good regular seasons, they haven't had any success against these teams. This year they've had, they've had some success. So I uh, look for Midwest City to prevail in that game. 6A2 has really got some great matchups mm -hmm. in this first round. Now, people, before you go to your game Friday night, they need to double-check what time it kicks off, right? So a lot more teams kicking off at 7.30 this year than in the, this week in the playoffs than they do in the regular season. Yes, and again, this is one of my pet peeves with the OSSAA, that uh, they make their default time for all playoff games at 7.30 p.m. So when they announced the pairings originally, every game's going to be set at 7.30 p.m., even though, like, 90% of the schools, I think, <laughs> around the state – start their games normally at 7 p.m. So then the schools have to get together and inform the OSSA that they're changing the game time. That takes a couple days after the original starting time's already been printed. It's such a big hassle. They also say it could 
end those problems by just making the default time 7 p.m. <laughs> and making those schools like oh, Wasso and Jenks who want to start at 7.30, you know, move it to there. So it's just a hassle. I'm hoping that the OSSA will get this problem fixed uh, for future years because it just causes confusion. Yeah, and so many, as you said, most of the schools in the state prefer that 7 o'clock kickoff time. All right, thanks and we for do too. Yeah, we do too. It <laughs> makes it easier for us to get our highlights in and for you to get your stories in and your photos. So, hey, thanks for watching uh, this edition, the playoff edition of our little chat here. Don't forget to pick up a Tulsa World on Friday. You'll have lots of preview coverage of the first week of the playoffs. And on Saturday, they'll have coverage and great photos. So make sure you get one on Saturday as well and go to okpreptsextra.com, as you see right there. Uh, anytime for some great high school football coverage online. For us, we're on Fox 23. At 6.20, I'll be live from Broken Arrow, our game of the week. Norman North of Broken Arrow, the top game for you. It's also going to be broadcast on your view. That's Cox Cable Channel 1333. I'll have a live preview at 6.20 from Broken Arrow. We'll have highlights of not only that game, but a lot of games around the area at 10.15, extended highlights, the whole second half of the newscast. Then at 11 o'clock, it's our season finale, our high school football tonight, our 30-minute show. Tons of highlights, reaction, we'll have expert analysis from Barry Lewis. So make sure you watch that. It's our season finale of the 30-minute show. And as always, go to fox23.com, our sports high school football page, for coverage there. Thanks.